Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you what I discovered. It's called GBT for All, and it's pretty much a game changer. What it basically is, and it's genius the way they designed it. So what it basically is, they trained their own large language model, right? They got the data, most of the data from prompt data from ChatGBT 3.5 API. The way they got that prompt data is by uh, creating a program that basically uh, uh, asks a question, then has ChatGPT answer that question, and they collected that data, the question and answer. So I think they collected over a million, million of those, and then they uh, they collected all the data. I'll show you exactly what what they did. So this here is their technical papers, and it's it's in their uh, it's in their GitHub. All their links. If you click here, that's their technical paper. On their technical paper, they pretty much explained everything that they did to get this model to work. How how they uh, collected the data, where they collected the data, everything is on here. If you guys are interested, just check this out. It's got the cost and everything. So this is the main uh, data collection part of this. And again, what they used was uh, ChatGPT to create a, uh, a programming using their API. I think it's the 3.5 API right here. And all, they, all the program would do was... Uh, have ChatGPT 3.5 and ask a question, any random question, and never repeat the question. Then have another ChatGPT uh, 3.5 model answer that question. Then they would collect that data, like in a CSV file or whatever, and then just keep doing it. So they did this uh, about a million times. So they collected a million prompt data uh, with questions and answers. They also use these other uh, data sets that are on the internet, like this one right here. Liam, if you click on it. This is the, one of the data sets they use. They also, for coding, they use Stack Overflow. They use this data set for, for the coding. And then uh, this is the third data set that they used here. Everything is linked. And these are all free and you can find those on the internet. So basically what these guys did, again, you can do it yourself. They show you exactly how they did it. And uh, most of these uh, data sets are on the internet. Uh, the only thing you would really have to pay for is um, using the ChatGPT 3.5 API to collect all that prompt data. So I think the, uh, the cost for them was $500 for a million, right? So not that not that bad, right? For a million uh, prompts. So now we're gonna actually test out the program to see how it works. So we can actually test it out. To test it out, the first thing you guys are gonna need to do is clone this, uh, clone this GitHub or just download it and save it. After you clone it, right? You're gonna, we're gonna scroll down here. Where this, uh, under where it says, try it yourself where it says direct link, click on this. It's gonna take a while, it's like a three gigabyte file. So once that's finished, all we're gonna to need to do is use something like Visual Studio Code, right? And uh, using something like CS Code, just open up the clone we just downloaded. I have mine open up here. All right, to get this to run, first thing we're gonna to need to do, right? Open up downloads and go to the download folder and, and copy the thing we just downloaded, right? We're gonna copy it, that .bin thing. It's about 3.5 gigabytes. Now we want to open up that uh, GPT-4 for, for all folder we just downloaded. That's this one here. We want to navigate into the chat folder and then paste it into the chat folder here. I already did it. Just paste that into the chat folder. Then you could close that here. Now open up something like Visual Studio Code and uh, navigate to that folder, right? The chat GPT for all folder. Then once you're in that folder, right? open up a, a new terminal. I'm going to close this one. We're going to open up a new terminal here, right? We're inside uh, the folder. Uh, it's called chat GBC for all dash main, right? We're here. Now I'm going to, I'm gonna, going to minimize this a bit here and I'm going to open up the web browser again. I'm going to minimize the web browser here. If you have a uh, Mac with the M1 chip, you would use this here. If you have a, if you're running on a Linux, you would use this here. If you're running on Windows, you would use this here with a PowerShell. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to set up a PowerShell. And uh, all you have to do is first just copy this here. And I'm going to I'm going to open up a new PowerShell. All right. Then we want to make sure that we're inside our directory of our uh, ChatGPT for all folder. Then we're just going to paste that and hit enter. Now it's going to load. Now it's loading the, uh, the now it's loading the program. That simple. So now we could ask it whatever we want to ask it. Uh, how can I make 
uh, a cake. How can I make a cake? Right? So it's going to answer us like you would like using ChatGPT. So remember, all this right now is connected locally. There is uh, there is no connection to the internet to this. This is all locally running. And basically, they created a mini version of ChatGPT. Uh, it's not as sophisticated as ChatGPT because uh, ChatGPT has trained on all the internet's data, basically. This is just trained on a million prompt data. But as you can see, it, uh, it gave us an answer. Uh, you will need to do the following steps and it's given us steps on how to make a cake. So it, it actually works, it's pretty cool. The one thing you guys have to remember, this thing is massively powerful. It will be, this is running locally. This is basically open source. People are gonna do it themselves and cre create their own versions with, uh, with way more data. So all right, guys, so this is pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more things like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rissan from RossmarTech.com, and thank you guys for watching.